Eric Barzeski here with a geeky look at why a driver, given the same impact conditions, club face and club path alignments, will curve a heck of a lot more than an 8 iron. I've got three dimensional space here represented in two dimensions, your computer screen. Uh, I've got a ball here, technically the ball is, or this point is located at the moment of maximum deformation. And for the purposes of this, we're going to constrain our the bottom vector of the D-plane to zero degrees, both vertically, no angle of attack, positive or negative, perfectly level strike, and it's going to be oriented directly at the target. It's not pointing left or right. The club is not swinging to the left or to the right. Zero degrees in all cases. I'm going to draw in a driver, club face normal, the top vector of the D-plane. It's going to be pointing there, and an 8-iron. It's going to be pointing there. Maybe three times as high, roughly. Who knows? Okay. These balls are not going to curve sideways at all. They have zero degree club face and zero degree path. They line up, the ball goes straight. We don't really care about those. That's not the question we're trying to seek an answer to. We want to point our club face, let's say five degrees. Again, none of the numbers are going to make sense or, or actually... Um, be anywhere close to being realistic because we're trying to represent three-dimensional space in two dimensions, but uh, let's pretend that's five degrees to the left. We're going to point our club face, both club faces there. We're going to keep the same amount of loft. So with an eight iron, it's going to intersect our three-dimensional grid system right over there, uh, right here where those two line segments cross. That's where our 8-iron club face will be pointing at the moment of maximum deformation if we turn it 5 degrees to the left. We're ignoring any changes in loft and just constraining that as well. Our driver will be pointing at this intersection of these two line segments. Okay, So if I were to draw that in, the club face normal, again the top vector of the D-plane, our driver will be pointing right there. Our 8-iron will be pointing right there. Okay, we've turned both of them to the left five degrees, the same five degrees for both. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in another view. Picture taking your eye and putting it on the ground or the camera right on the ground, right behind the ball, pointing right out here at this flag or this target, okay? We're gonna see something that looks like this. Okay, there's this line on the vector system or our, sorry our coordinate system and there's this line okay again this target line is coming straight at us straight out of there that red dot straight at us as our camera or our eye for now I'm just gonna draw in the green lines the green arrows from this perspective on the right okay if I were to draw in the yellow lines, they would just be this, right? This is why we have zero degrees of spin axis tilt. Because this would be our spin axis in both of those cases, right? Zero degrees. The balls have pure backspin. Again, we don't really care about those, so we're going to get rid of those. We do care about these green lines, these green arrows. And you saw the answer to the question if you were paying attention, but I'll draw them for you again now. I'm just drawing the same line and extending it out so we can read the number. Negative 32 degrees we get with this driver and with this 8 iron. We get 11 degrees. This is the answer to the question. Okay, what we see here is a representation of how the, the spin axis decreases, the amount of tilt to the spin axis decreases as we increase loft. Both of these shots would show negative 5 degrees of club face angle on the flight scope or track man, 0 degrees of path. We've zeroed that out, we're not, gonna, we're not changing that, we constrain that to 0 degrees. The amount of tilt to the spin axis changes quite a bit as we increase the loft because the two vectors on the D-plane and the plane itself 
is inclined less as those two vectors separate. The top one, the 8 iron, the ball would actually spin around this axis, 11 degrees, and the driver would actually spin around, we got negative, we got 32 degrees around that axis. Okay, so that means even if we were able to hit the 8 iron 300 yards, like we all hit our drivers on the internet, it would still curve a whole heck of a lot less than it does with our driver because of the increased distance between the two vectors of the d-plane, the bottom vector of the club path, the top vector of the club face normal, and how that changes the orientation or the amount of tilt to the d-plane itself. Again, these numbers may not necessarily be authentic. Uh, I don't think five degrees, a, a driver pointing five degrees left of a zero degree club path is gonna produce 32 degrees of spin axis tilt, but the relationship between them, one being almost significantly less, that number, that relationship is still relevant. That answers the question, why does a driver or a club with less loft curve a whole heck of a lot more than a driver, or sorry, an eight iron or a club with more loft? Or why can I curve my three wood much more easily than I can curve my pitching wedge or, or just how much more sensitive, you know, the driver is to path and face variations than our pitching wedge. For much, much simpler versions of this, uh, and the stuff that you need to know, check out the five simple keys on Facebook or at purestrike5sk.com or visit the samtrap.com where you can ask me to make this much simpler uh, because again this is the super geeky explanation uh, done you know with three-dimensional space represented in two dimensions and stuff so uh, just a way to spend some time on an afternoon thanks take care